an evil old house, the kind some people call haunted, is like an undiscovered country just waiting to be explored. Hill House has stood for ninety years and might stand for ninety more. In the house, floors are firm, walls continue upright, and doors are kept sensibly shut. Silence reigns heavily against the wood and stone of Hill House, and whatever walks there, walks alone. Hill House itself was built ninety odd, uh, very odd, years ago by a man named Hugh Crane as a home for his wife and daughter in the most remote part of New England he could find. It was an evil house from the start, a house that you could say was born bad. Hugh Crane's young wife died seconds before she set eyes on the house, when for no apparent reason her horses bolted, crashing her carriage against a big tree. Mrs. Crane was carried, uh, lifeless is the word I think, into the home her husband had built for her. Hugh Crane was left an embittered man, with a small daughter Abigail to bring up. Fortunately, well, for me that is, Hugh Crane did not leave Hill House, he married again. And the second Mrs. Crane's death is even more interesting than her predecessors. She broke her neck tumbling down the sixteen marble steps in the front foyer. I have been able, unable to find out how or why she fell, although I do have my suspicions. Hugh Crane left Abigail in the care of a nurse and then moved to England where he died in a drowning accident. It's marvellous, I mean, the way the history of the house follows a very much a classic pattern. For some reason, Abigail always kept that same room in Hill House, where she grew up and grew old. In later years she became a bedridden invalid and hired a young girl from the local village to live with her as a paid companion. And it's with this young companion the evil reputation of Hill House really begins. The story goes, anyway, that the old lady died in the nursery upstairs while the companion fooled around with the farm boy on the veranda. The companion inherited Hill House and indeed occupied it for several years. The townspeople believed that one way or another she had murdered her benefactor. She lived a life of complete solitude in the empty house. Though some say it is not empty and never has been since the night old Miss Abby died. Whatever was and still is in the house. Eventually drove the companion mad. We do know she hanged herself. After her death, the house passed legally into the hands of a distant relative, a Mrs. Sanderson, in Boston, who I very much wanted to see.